welcome back to the final Sakuga Builds cast of the year. Ever. Not ever, unless Matt chooses to back out. <laughs> I am Daniel, and I'm joined by my co-host, Matthew, as always. I'm joined by my co-host, Daniel Lewa, as ever. Did you get the minifigure? I, yeah, you have my minifigure of the week, actually. Oh, what a surprise. What is it? It's the Moss Eisley Canteen. Wait, you better do yours first. I don't want to choose the same one. Uh, I, I have two because they both correlate with this week. So I'll say the first one, Cad Bane. I, we found him. He was lost forever. And I found him inside the Star Wars Monopoly box because I used him as an avatar. I used him as my character in uh, in the game a long time ago. Anyways, really missed him. And my, my real minifigure of the week is the Imperial yep. Spy from, from Oz Eisley. It's just awesome. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, if anybody has played Lego Star Wars, the original trilogy, that's where I first met that character. I remember... Well, going back and watching the movie A New Hope, you see the Imperial Spy, but I didn't really recognize him until playing the game. And he makes just the weird sound, wah, 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 and you, he keeps sending guys after you, and you keep having to fight them. So it's amazing they finally have a figure of him, and he's in the most expensive Star Wars set of last year. But that's okay. What's yours? It was the Imperial Spy. Yours was uh. No, it's good. You shared both of them, so that's great. Well, yeah, just on that note of Lego Star Wars, yeah, it, it's finally good that we got him because you see him so much in the video game. And same goes for, like, the Hammerhead and such. Like, we grew oh, up yeah. with these, but it never had an actual figure of it. So, yeah, yeah. Moss Ice of Cantina was lit, guys. I, it was my a present to myself this holiday Merry season. Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah. Anyways, the first annual Sakuga Builds Awards cast. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. This will be every year, and my birthday's on the 31st, so it's kind of special. Um, what we'll be doing is going through all the themes that we know. Because uh, the, what's the ones we don't know? Friends, Technic, DC, yeah. City. Harry Potter. Yeah. Harry Potter. We're, we do have City on here a little bit. Oh, oh yeah, we did have a City one because we had a little bit of City, but I mean, Harry Potter I know a little bit about, but I don't really get those sets. So just a heads up, we will not be talking about those themes. But all the other themes will say our best set of the year and best minifigure of the year for said themes and also the overall best sets and minifigures of the year. And we won't double count anything, so if it's best set of the year then it won't be in the best for that theme and right. this is all going to be just based on our own personal opinion uh some things on here you will likely not agree with but are things that we got likely the most enjoyment out probably this year the sets from each of these themes are the biggest of each of these themes that mean the most to us and that uh, we just had the most fun with either building or displaying or whatever it may be yeah, I mean, our, our opinions, we do have, like, we do have, like, reasons behind our opinions. So it's not just like, oh, this one was the funnest for me. It's like, okay, I think this one's the exactly. best because of our criteria for what's best, like, figures, playability, the build, everything. So it is an educational assessment, but you may not agree with it. So we'll just dive into it, I suppose. Oh, boy. I'm going to go ahead and start with the first theme we'll be talking about is Star Wars. I'm just, I'll talk about, I just nominated myself to talk about it because maybe I got more Star Wars than you. Maybe not. I don't know. About the same. Okay. No, if they had a good year, in my humble and honest opinion, not every set was perfect, but there was a lot of good things uh, for sure. So the best minifigure... For Star Wars, it's really close, but we did have to go with the Dark Trooper minifigure. He's just so perfect. I have him right here. 
His helmet is amazing. And not only that, underneath his helmet, they actually printed stuff onto him, like his visor. And like, they didn't even need to do that. But looks amazing. And then the shoulder piece is actually printed on it as well. And it looks dope. He was awesome in the show. And I can't get enough of it. But it's really close between like Gar Saxon, Bo Katan, the Mandalorian armorer. Uh, there was a lot of good figures, but this one just has a little bit edge for me personally. And the fact that it was just so exclusive, only came in one expensive set, is, yeah, it's hard to get. But hopefully in this coming year, we will get maybe a battle pack or something like that to see more of this awesome guy. Yeah, I mean, me personally, I love the exclusivity, but yeah, if there's a battle pack, I won't be mad. But it is cool to have the one. Anyways, I will continue with the best Star Wars set of this year. And you may not agree with it. And I'm sorry. But <laughs> we did go with Moff Gideon's Imperial Light Cruiser. And everybody hates it. But I'm not everybody. <laughs> Everyone said, oh, it's another gray Star Wars ship. The size is so perfect. It's playable, displayable. It's not super iconic. It just the last episode of Mandalorian season two. But look at these minifigures in this set. Fennec Shan doesn't even come anywhere else. Moff Gideon doesn't come anywhere else. Dark Trooper doesn't come anywhere else for now. And so you can recreate your favorite scene. And it just is so dope. Like what? A, what? A, what? What? What do? What do you like about this set? Uh, yeah, I struggle to see a lot of the arguments people have. Yeah, it's another gray ship, but it's a much more distinctive silhouette than uh, a lot of ships. It's a capital ship, and if you think of past LEGO capital, like big scale ships, you have the Malevolence, you have the Venator, you have the First Order Star Destroyer. Like, all of those are very iconic, you know. They're, they're very sought after now, especially that they're retired because they have cool figures. And really cool builds and it's just something that's very striking you know it's not a ucs set so it's not just super unwieldy and awkward you can't do anything with it's meant to be used with figures and in both of our opinions we like things that um, go with figures and so you'll see a lot of bias towards that but the uh, i love this ship i think it's very, it looks great and it's not in just the final episode it's in the boba fett episode of mandalorian season two and a bunch of other ones at least the inside as well, so uh, I, I loved it. People are asking an iconic shit, but I just Moff Gideon is so cool in, in the show. He's such a dope character, and this is his thing. Like uh, General Grievous' starship, you barely see that in the movie itself. You see it a little more in the Clone Wars, but it's just a movie. You barely see it. But the fact that it's General Grievous' thing makes it super cool to me. So that's maybe you'll understand why I really gravitated towards it. But I'll let Daniel take it away for our next theme. So the next theme is Ninjago. This theme was just amazing this year. We saw so many amazing sets, both with the, the tie-in sets to the TV shows, with the Island and Seabound, and also the Legacy sets were mixed. But it was really hard to choose the best figures and best set because there were so many good ones. But I have to say the best minifigure is Chief Mamatis because this guy just he covers everything you want in a really cool action adventure themed minifigure and especially as far as Ninjago figures go which there are a lot of cool ones this guy just captures kind of a, a mystery he has very striking bright colors that we haven't seen in this combination before in Ninjago specifically and at a I have to say that the headpiece is really, really stellar. So, the and being based on kind of like old Aztec Incan armor and everything, added a little extra flair with the patterns and everything printed on his on his torso and legs. There are a lot of other good contenders like Benthomar, is a very nice figure. Prince Kalmar, of course, was really close runner-up, uh, but I would say this guy takes the cake well I, I think it's super like a re unique because what have you ever seen a lego thing like like aztec themed minifigure 
Um, I, th I think there's like a CMF one that has like more of that lion head thing. I don't know if that's Mayan or Aztec or I really don't know. But oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, like like you said, it's it's like what you'd want in a Lego original theme, and like Ninjago covers so much of the territory of what an original theme is. It's like one of the only original themes left. So if it, it covers, you know underwater it had the underwater theme this year it had the island theme so it's kind of cool that they stretched out cover, cover a lot of ground with one of their only ips that they have full control over anyways yeah exactly. I, I agree for sure and i think that is what makes a good ninjago figure specifically is like you can't you wouldn't see this in star wars you wouldn't see this in marvel harry potter it's something so distinct and original and that's what makes it special so for Going sure. on to the best set, which is also hard. I give it to we give it to the Hydro Bounty, which just as a total package covers everything. It has all of the ninja, and so you you're covered. You don't if, even if you only got this set, you would at least have the main ninja as well as the main antagonist uh, and a and a secondary antagonist. So like if you want conflict in a box and just a one set does it all, this is it. The fact that it looks good on display as, as like a very nice display piece, as well as has tons of functionality, including being able to keep this little submarines inside of the ship. It, it's just amazing. But the mech on the front that can detach and the playability, putting figures inside the cockpit and everything. It just does it all. And it looks so good. It's not, Sometimes Ninjago can get a little tacky with the color scheme, like primary colors. And a lot of the old Destiny's bounties have stuck really hard with just the red and tan or black. But this really is a beautiful departure, very sci-fi or Jules Verne inspired. And just kind of, yeah, and yet again, you wouldn't see this in any of the other themes that LEGO does. So that's why this is number one. I agree. Playability plus figures plus... Uh, display value i'm not sure if i'm a fan of the gold that much but it looks really cool and yeah i agree I nothing else to say and if you're okay. thinking if it's you're thinking it so it was a different set we will keep in mind that if it won best set of its theme the if it won the best set overall it can't be the best set of the theme so we do have to keep that in mind anyways I will take over this next section right here, which is Lego Marvel Superheroes, which, if you know, if we're just talking about their year in general, it was interesting. Infinity Saga was disappointing, to say the least, um, but there were some really cool things, like the Venom bus, and the Daily Bugle, and the Carnage bus, and Bro Thor's Asgard, so it was kind of a bunch of, wasn't very consistent, but... What can you do? So the best minifigure, or maybe a surprise to you because the CMF happened. But I did have to go with Daredevil. Okay. Uh, it's There's no new molds. There's nothing unique about this besides the face and chest printing. But I think it works so well. If you just look at classic Daredevil, the comic Daredevil, it's just a plain red latex suit with the red eyes. It's just so cool to have in Lego form. That's why I chose it. It's so cool to have this in Lego form. And apparently they could only include it because it was an 18 plus set is what I hear. They could only include Punisher, Blade, and Daredevil at the Daily Bugle because it's 18 and up. <clears throat> but wow. Maybe I'm just a Daredevil fan, but what a blessing it is to have this. All right. Uh, finally. I feel like a lot of times that we've given minifigures a really hard time when they're very simple like we've praised the uh, marvel cmf series and everything and some of the other very complicated ornate figures but this is just a great reminder that a figure can be so simple like there's not a single bit of printing on the legs there's no dual molded anything or whatever all these little extra uh, gimmicks that that we have but it still accomplishes its purpose. It looks great as a Daredevil figure and is just beautiful. And it's, it is a fun reuse of the Black Panther ears as Daredevil horns. But it looks great. It's just great. 
yeah, it just works. You know, it might have been the best piece to do it rather than a new one. It just works like that. So, yeah, this is where simplicity really works. Don't be mad at me. I feel like with this next slide, I'm going to lose a lot of people. Uh, uh, the best Marvel set of this year is this one. And do I know the name? I don't think so. But it is a pack that comes with pork grind, iron, venom, and venom in a go-kart. As well as Spider-Man for fun. The reason I chose this one is because, you know, not the best set always has to be the hugest one. This one was so cheap for two exclusive figures, four figures overall, and the two exclusive ones are so dope. Port grind. Like, why did we deserve this? Iron Venom, which we did get before, but this one has even a different face. So... It's just amazing. Easiest thing to buy. So, definitely my favorite. Oh, yeah. I mean, this kind of seems like a meme at first, but once you get into it, this is just awesome with the, especially pork grind and iron venom. They're, I mean, Marvel and Star Wars are one of some of those themes that are so inconsistent every year as far as the quality of the sets. And marvel also this year was just wildly inconsistent like you were saying but some real standouts kind of like bro thor's new asgard and uh some of the other stuff this set is just great because it's not based on any movie and i feel like a lot of the marvel sets that you can tell the designers have the most fun with are ones where they can just pull from random characters from the comics or tv shows or whatever cartoons and not have to rely on concept art from the upcoming Eternals and stuff like that. Yeah, without a doubt. Well. So that, that gives into the inconsistency of Marvel because you have to count movie sets plus comic sets. And then sometimes they do like a fusion of like, oh, it's like an MCU vulture mixed with a classic vulture kind of mix. So sometimes that happens, yeah. but big fan of this one. Next up, we got minecraft i guess we could tag team this one if you want you I, better do it i'll just do it quickly i got the majority of the i got like the first half of this year's uh, majority of the minecraft sets second half like sky tower i don't have the uh, modern tree also didn't get that because i didn't love them but i am going to say the best minifigure for minecraft is the piglin um just because of the head mold it really works. Uh, it's new to newer, a newer character to Minecraft. The head mold is just awesome. There was a lot of good mini like figures, uh, like player figures with prints that that were pretty good. But I love the I love all the custom molded Minecraft everything. So it was close with the drowned of the uh, enchanted creeper. But I think this one's head takes the cake. It's really dope. And speaking of pigs. The pig house. I don't know why it was so fun. It was between this and the uh, warped forest, which the piglin comes in. But this one, it was so satisfying to build. The features were awesome. And the whole house explodes for, like as if a creeper was exploding it. And it opened up. And it's just... It encapsulated what's so satisfying about the Minecraft Legos for me. Because it's really blocky and just awesome. So... I would say the the Warped Forest had the better figures for sure, but if we're just talking about a, mainly this set, I would say this one. Yeah, I think you're right that it doesn't capture what makes LEGO Minecraft great. It's very blocky. It's ba it's a structure that's based off of a creature. Like we've seen that time and again, and it's displayable. The, the figures, it's very playable. Yeah, exactly. Displayable and for a Minecraft set. That's what you want with with some decent figures or creatures. But yeah, the good thing about the creature ones is that you can display them like, oh, that's a Minecraft pig, but big. So we'll just continue on to the monkey kid right now. Yeah, finally, let's go. So as you all know, I'm, I'm paid by Lego to shill monkey kid for Western audiences because none of y'all are buying it in the West and it's just bombing hard. But I'm here. It's doing well in at least China. However, I love the Monkey Kids so much. It is just such another fun original theme, like we were saying with, well, original based off of a novel, ancient Chinese novel. But it does a lot of what Ninjago does as far as having so much creativity 
and just out there wild uh, characters and builds, but with a very different uh, spin. So, best minifigure of Monkey Kid this year was so hard, because I love all of them, but I'll have to get it, give it to the Spider Queen because... She has just everything going right for her. She's beautiful spider-like webbing and printing on the front, a spidery cape, and just a found fantastic rubber headdress. Very reminiscent of Hela from Thor Ragnarok, but with a very much more spidery flair. This isn't a super exclusive figure. You can get this one specifically in two sets, and a different Spider Queen variation came in a set last year, but... This one just really works with the coloring and everything. Definitely have to say that the runners-up would be the Lady Bone Demon. It's very fun as well. And Macaque. The evil six-eared Macaque from the Flower Fruit Mountain set. Also phenomenal. Yeah, sometimes exclusivity can be a big factor. It's like, oh, this one's not as cool because it comes with a lot of stuff. But you got to keep in mind. Uh, like, my shout-out to my big sister, she... She was looking at my Moss Eisley. She said how much she loves the C-3PO. And I'm like, oh, that comes with everything. Everyone has C-3PO. She's like, yeah, but it's still cool. And like, you know, you're right. It is still cool. So, yeah, this, everything is so cohesive about this and stunning. But, like, her dress printing and cape and headpiece. So, fire. Amen. The best set is also very hard. A lot of awesome sets came out this year. Especially Flower Fruit Mountain, which is just beautiful to look at and some other really fun ones like the spider queen arachnoid base which has great features pigsy's noodle tank is just super quirky and random which makes it awesome but one thing that both matt and i love about monkey kid are some of the creature builds because ninjago does a lot of dragons but they kind of get repetitive and but Monkey Kid has a lot more freedom to do some weird stuff. Last year we saw the Demon Bull King. This year we see the Bone Demon, which is just incredible in every way. But the pictures just don't even do it justice. <clears throat> it's giant. It just towers over everything. It's so glow-in-the-dark. <laughs> like, if, he, if it's exposed to light during the day, like at night with your lights off, it will just glow so bright. And all the details are incredible. Though... The most fun part about it is uh, the fact that it's like a combining mech. Like if you think of Voltron or the Ultra Ninja combo mech that comes out next year. This thing divides into a scorpion, multiple different spiders, a crypt. Like that just really leans into what Lego does well. In the fact that you can have things combine and take apart and change things around. Uh, and as well as... Like a monkey kid does well, which are these really kind of villainous, creepy, almost demonic looking uh, builds that we just don't see in any other theme, but are so cool. Yeah, well, this one's way too unique. The uniqueness and originality just shoots it above the, the stars is to be the best set. That's why you said between the Flower Fruit Mountain and this one, I just had to say this one because when do you see something like this? And yeah, that's my, that's the by far my favorite part about Monkey Kid. The top three sets for me are this Demon Bull King and Spider Queen's base, because the creatures are just awesome. But this, yeah, it's probably a runner up for one of the sets of the year as well. It's just so cool. So, yeah. oh yeah, big agree on this one. Uh, about the ideas, we I can do this one. Yeah, I'll announce quick, the fig. Because... I'll, I'll announce the figure. Sure. Okay. Okay. So, I don't have any Lego ideas besides Voltron. We had a whole podcast talking yeah. about Lego ideas. So, we chose Tigger because Winnie the Pooh set probably had the best figures out of all the idea sets. And Tigger's works really well. He also has a tail. And, yep. Yeah. yeah it, I would definitely say it's the best figure from one of the best idea set probably the second best idea set of the year ideas is one of those things where it's hard to collect ideas themed sets because ninjago monkey kid you have some consistency with ideas they are just so all over the place with what the scales are with what the quality of the builds are with and they're usually pretty good but just 
Some aren't as good as others. We have memed to death some of the idea sets, like the typewriter and the guitar, just because for us it's hard to see the appeal of something that's not minifig scale. We understand that is amazing for a lot of people, and the engineering that goes into something like the typewriter is admirable. But that being said, the set, the idea set of the year is definitely the medieval blacksmith, just because it it brings back kind of a, cl a classic castle vibe, uh, which we have not really had much of lately, into a, just a, such a beautiful, detailed build that looks so good on your desk, uh, whether it's opened up or closed. And the build process is so satisfying with all the little tiny details. It just does everything right. And it's like, I don't, I got, Oh, well, throughout the year, I was like, well, when are we going to get another idea set that is like this, that is kind of at this level, but we just, we just it's hard to rely on stuff like that. Winnie the Pooh would definitely be our second choice just because it is also so detailed and faithful to its source material, but uh, Medieval Blacksmith is just beautiful. Video is an interesting case because it might be the worst theme of the year. It bombed so hard that LEGO had to cancel all of their future plans for it and you know bring them back maybe in 2023 they say that's not going to happen but it sure generated so many cool figures that was definitely the best part about it if you forget the app you forget the the overpriced terrible beatboxes and you just look at the figures themselves it generated so many so it's really hard to choose but one of my favorite uh figures of all time now and definitely my favorite video is the Kraken drummer, Squid drummer, because his head is just so unique, so nice. If only Legends of Chima had figures as good as this without the weird minifig head mold combo thing, it would have succeeded more, I think. But the, the printing on this is beautiful. The personality it has, it's just oozing with personality. I will have to say that the best set is the one that this minifigure comes in because it not only has this figure, but it has the shark guitarist, which is a beautiful color variation of another shark video figure we got earlier in the year. And it's just a fun, quirky stage that's set as a pirate ship with crazy colors and amazing figures. That's all I'll say about video. It rest yeah, they had good figures for sure, but I feel like they're a little too crazy to go with anything else. So they're... They are really cool because they're so crazy, but sometimes I see a mess like that in a way too, like the Marvel one is a little too detailed to go with some of the simpler minifigs. But do you want to go over your Lego City nominees? So real quick, well, neither of us are city collectors. It's just, we never have, like our whole lives, we've never gotten really into any city. I think I have like two or three city sets ever just not quite for us but this year a city set came out and it was on our most anticipated sets of the years list because of what it means to us in a nostalgic way uh, and that is the rocket racer city stunt set and of course the best figure then of city has to be rocket racer inspired by the main antagonist of the lego racers video games from way back when we grew up playing LEGO Racers 2, it was amazing, and I beat the final boss of Rocket Racer in LEGO Racers 2, I was so proud, but then I realized that it was because of a glitch, and this guy just went up to an obstacle and just kept hitting the car repeatedly into the wall, wow. and uh, let me win. So, but at least I, I beat him. Anyway, so I love this, this figure, it doesn't look quite exactly the okay. same as it did in the game. Well, but, uh, that means the best set is this one, right? Yeah. Great. Creator time, OMG. Is <laughs> something else Daniel knows about. Oh my gosh. Wow, you're really not interested in talking about it. Okay. Creator expert. A lot of interesting sets all the way from the, ti the Titanic to some of the much smaller stuff that we weren't interested in pickup truck porsche you know all this stuff anyway the one we like the best is the police station fantastic modular very original with the three building design and can't wait to see more modulars in the future
<sighs> Great. It looks beautiful. There, we have no best minifigure for this category because the like city figure. So choose your own favorite. So now we're going out to the general awards for the year. We'll start off with the first award, which is the worst minifigure of the year. Okay. The worst minifigure of the year is the Adidas shoe guy. Because not only does no one care about Adidas, no one wants to have an Adidas minifigure. On top of that, no one wants to put a sticker on their Adidas minifigure. No one wants to put a sticker on any minifigure. Okay. So let's just be honest. He has a plain derp face. Stupid. We hate it. Everyone hates it. Okay. It was a fun gift with purchase to give to my dad. So he has something to build. So he's not sad and left out. All right. I'll continue with the worst set of the year, which is actually on on par with this. <laughs> the Adidas Superstar. Oh my gosh. Why? Why is this the worst one of the year? Why would you want this? <laughs> why would you want... Okay, my question is, why would you want this as a shoe in real life? You want to go buy the Adidas Superstar? Sure, it's iconic. It's not even that iconic. Like, bro... Why would you build a set? And why is a shoelace like a, a part of the Lego set? And I'm not even too mad about that, but it's just weird. It's not cool. It's not so iconic and cool that you want to display. Like, it feels like an Air Force One. That's like so classic. Who doesn't want to display a Jordan or Air Force One on their, a Jordan one on their desk in Lego form? That'd be fire. So this is like when Halo gave their licensing to Mega Blocks. This is like... The reverse situation where you know a bad license gave their license to a good company like lego so kind of a fail definitely my most hated set of the year and i'm sorry if you like it all right best piece of the year goes to this humble two plate high brick it's just so useful in so many situations in so many sets uh for years they've used this weird kind of sloped curved piece when they want to achieve some sort of structural uh, effect with two plates high but finally having this piece you can just do so much you can fill a lot of gaps and it's very multi-purpose with the kind of the ridges on the outside and the axle hole down the middle fire so give it to them. i'm surprised it's been this long to get that piece but yeah. fire so here's the moment everyone has been waiting for the best minifigure of 2021 is captain america sam wilson falcon edition all right guys let's just be honest guys this was the best minifigure we all know it he got everything that everything that a fan would want Arm printing, leg printing, face printing, foot printing, shield printing, oh, wrist printing. Yeah, he got everything. <laughs> and then a brand new piece is the, the thing connecting his wings. Looks amazing. The show was okay. He was the best part. Awesome hair piece. Looks beautiful. Big fan. Yeah, as proof of how popular it was, at our local Bricks and Minifigs, we went to go see what CMF figures they had. And they had every single Marvel CMF figure, all of them, multiple copies. But they didn't have a single one of these Captain Americas because Sheesh. he is just that good. Beautiful. The, the suit looks good in the show, too. I'm just going to say that. You know, the, it's a good translation no, no. of minifigure format. Big, big fan. I'll let Daniel announce the set of the year we did split it into two to have an unlicensed set of the year and one that is licensed so there were just too many good too many good options of course licenses things like external ip like star wars harry potter stuff like that unlicensed would be internal themes that lego developed so best unlicensed set of the year easy win is ninjago city gardens that's right. You thought it was going to be best Ninjago set of the year. Well, it also is that. Uh, as a follow-up to Ninjago City and Ninjago City Docks, this just blows both of them out of the water, in my opinion, as far as color and consistency and quality. All of the little 
apartment or shop or buildings that make up the make up the structure are just so impeccably this immaculately designed they're so cute and there's so much here it's just exploding just dripping with with personality and color and life and i love it the only thing that was kind of let down is while it has a ton like 19 mini figures there aren't a lot of really standout ones maybe just like ronin or the mechanic are nice to see but the, just the build itself and the value for money 5600 pieces for 300 dollars us is wild it's just wacky that they that they even made this and it's so beautiful i love it that's it it's cool so set of the year uh if you want to take the energy from the building and put it into the minifigs and vice versa we will have the license set of the year and maybe you guys saw it coming but the daily bugle and this is kind of nice because this is daniel's set of the year and this is my set of the year so we split to license and unlicensed just that's how it is but wow everybody knows this set is amazing the figures are amazing the build was so fun there's so many easter eggs it looks so good on display it's such a good way to display your minifigures the high rises hanging them flying and put the vulture above freaking put the venom source around it venom's just like just it it, it's a great way to enhance your 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 current minifigures, and it's such an iconic location. It's the Marvel f fan set. The only thing I could think of is, will we ever get something like this again for Marvel? Hopefully. It's you know maybe since it did so well, I don't know if it actually did so well. I mean, I think it really. I mean, it has so much good feedback at least that you would think they would do it something. The set of the year, in my opinion, the best licensed set, the best set ever. Probably the best, my favorite set of all time. Best set ever. There. Well, and there's a lot in common with this set and the Ninjago City Gardens because, like we've said, for us, we love minifig scale stuff. And for our favorite themes, to have, like, a centerpiece that all of the minifigure action can be centered around and, like you were saying, incorporate all of the other minifigures from other sets even and eras into one thing is just phenomenal. It's kind of like how the Mos Eisley Cantina is for Star Wars. I have tons of, of different Ninjago characters and figures and ninja all over my Ninjago City Gardens just because it's just so fun. You can just do whatever, and this is this is the same. You can just put whatever superhero, and it just elevates it even more. So phenomenal. Beautiful. Okay, so we divided the theme... The, our last award, which is best theme, we also divided into licensed and unlicensed. So many good sets and stuff came out this year. I'll start with the best unlicensed theme being, yeah, no big surprise, Ninjago. There aren't a lot of unlicensed themes, but between Ninjago, Monkey Kid Video, a lot of these things, Ninjago had the most consistency and quality between all of the me media and the sets and the figures. And while I love Monkey Kid and it was a close second, this just brought so much to the table with Seabound and the island for the entire year. Uh, just beyond anything, I will say it was the best Ninjago year ever. By far. Easily. Knocks all the other years out of the park. So this easily wins best unlicensed theme of 2021. I, well, when you describe it to me, I, I, see, I see what you mean. It was very consistent. And so it's fair enough. Uh, the final award will be the best licensed theme. I don't think we did too great, but we did choose Star Wars because they gave us a lot of just cool things. Like primarily, I think the the Mandalorian Starfighter, although people had gripes about the build, like the cockpit or the landing gear, just the fact that we go back in time to an era that's not, you know, Luke's Landspeeder era, original trilogy <laughs> era, and get that kind of thing. And then, yeah, Duel on Mandalore, which which was topical because of the this new season of Clone Wars and ever, but just another kind of like fan service-y, nice set. Bad Bat Shuttle, Mandalorian Forge, out awesome figures. So, so many cool figures. Of course, Moff Gideon Star Cruiser, I'm a big fan of. I did end up getting 
General Grievous's Starfighter, which was actually pretty poggers. And I didn't get either of these two big ones, AT-AT or Republic Gunship, but I don't hate them. So, oh, and I will mention Slave 1. Slave 1 is smaller, but it is a really cool build. And but Boba Fett figure and uh, Mando figure were dope. So, so yeah, probably, probably the best overall theme as far as they're pretty consistent. Best licensed theme overall, I would say. Yeah, and Star Wars can be all over the place. And it really depends on your era of interest. For people who love OG trilogy stuff, some years are better than others, versus like prequel trilogy, Clone Wars, sequel trilogy. No year is good for sequel trilogy fans, but but this year gave a little bit of everything. You know, the big UCS stuff, including the first UCS ship from prequel era, which is very exciting, as well as just Clone Wars stuff, Bad Batch stuff, Mando stuff, diving more into the TV side of it. It was a great, great um, decision introducing so many cool new figures like the entire Bad Batch, so many new Mandalorian figures between the Clone Wars and Mandalorian show. It's just awesome. The scaled down ships like Boba Fett's ship, X-Wing, and the TIE Fighter are just great ways to get those iconic vehicles for a much cheaper price than has been possible before while retaining the look and quality. So Star Wars is amazing. Lego's amazing. We build, no, I'm not gonna do it. Oh, we build a motivation. <laughs> not that you need any justification for uh, spending your disposable income. Okay, this will be the last thing that I say for the, uh, the podcast. My mic keeps cutting out, but overall this year was pretty good and there was really fun year for the podcast. Thank you, Daniel, for joining me. I know you got married and everything, so we had to take a break, but congratulations on your wedding. Congratulations on your Legos. And may we have a great new year. Please wish me a happy birthday in the comments, guys. It's on December 31st, guys. Can you please go down to the comments and leave me a happy birthday, guys, and a big thumbs up on this video. Um, overall, yeah, Daily Bugle. Daily Bugle could be the only set that comes out this year, and I'd be okay with it. So go ahead with your final thoughts. That's the last thing I'm going to say, so goodbye. Thank you, Methuselah, Matthew, for all your contributions to the cast this year it's been fun starting this and having an outlet to to have all of these fun discussions about random lego topics and all of the our favorite sets and least favorite sets and hopefully we can continue to share our enthusiasm and love of this hobby with all of you hopefully you continue to tune in this coming year as we continue for lots more fun stuff January 1st is right around the corner. The cycle never stops. But thank you to all of you who have supported us, liked or commented or watched or whatever for these this year. And that was the Sakuga Cast Awards for 2021. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Adios. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Bye, bye. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry about your mic. What? Why?